What is going on, guys and girls? Welcome back to EU4 as the North Sea Empire. We are currently play as Emperor Torolf II of the House Yingling, a just incorruptible entrepreneur and just the man we needed on the throne the last couple of years because he has basically held this empire together uh, through its tumultuous time. Now, uh, we have just fought a war against Carp. Carpathian, yeah, we've got Carpathian Carpathia over here, which is really cool. But yeah, we just fought a war against them, uh, where they had attacked our vassal Denmark, who was in a rebellion against us again. Um, but yeah, it, we are left with a little bit of, well, with actually no manpower, because to fully reinforce our armies, we need 17,000. We only got 6,000, 6, and we haven't actually dealt with the rebels in Lotharingia just yet. So um, that's a little bit problematic. We still have a lot of corruption. Our legitimacy is very low, and we have the problem that the Renaissance spawned all the way in China. And so we are very far behind when it comes to technology. Um, our cost, our tech cost is just so huge. I mean, it's just really bad. Actually, we're not that far behind in tech just yet, but the cost is just so expensive. Uh, but yeah, at the same time, we are currently annexing two of our vassals, Chernigov, which is hopefully done very soon, and then Sweden. And maybe that will keep our other vassals in line? I'm, I'm just not sure. I'm just not sure. We'll see. Well, so far, I mean, at least Lotharingia is in no position to declare war on us, and even France doesn't look all that powerful. So maybe even though their um, liberty desire is high, they don't actually feel like attacking us right now, which I would appreciate. But yeah, um, we also kind of have, like, I don't know, five years left? Then we need to declare war on Holland, because otherwise our cores are, um, well, are just gonna go away, and I wouldn't want that to happen. So we will need to- oh my god, are we being attacked? I think we are. We are- well, I don't know, he's going a weird way. So yeah, the Catholics have actually con they have full control over this. This is just not an army it can really- do anything, right? Do we need to reinforce any other armies? I don't think so. It's just this one. So now that we're on friendly territory... Oh, shit. We were in friendly territory. Um, maybe we can leave? We should be able to. Good. Alright. Well, so this is still kind of annoying. I think what we'll do is we'll actually land here. And... Yeah, just, I guess, wait for these troops to reinforce. In fact, what I can do for a little bit... Uh, to save some money is stop paying for them that much and maybe stop rooting out corruption that heavily to at least not lose the money that we have right now. So we're still rooting out corruption quite a bit every year, so that's good. But yeah, we kind of need to slow it down a little bit and hope that, ah, man, are they actually really going to stick around there now? That's actually kind of annoying because how am I going to get over there? I don't know. But oh well, we just kind of have to wait it out for now. We will annex you soon enough, right? Yes. Kind of have to make sure that you don't get over 50% liberty desire, because otherwise you will... It will stop. Our progress will stop. But yeah, I think Chernigov, we're pretty safe to be able to annex them. Uh, and then that should keep Sweden in line. Truce with Bohemia has ended. We can invest in an idea. Income from vassals. Kind of interested in doing that, to be honest. Uh, but maybe what we want to do first. Let me quickly check our religion here. Mm, we have the national unrest reduction. That's very useful. We have... Uh, we kind of need everything. We need the manpower recovery. We need the legitimacy. And we kind of need this, too. I was kind of thinking about going for the individual creeds perk because this also fits quite well with like our whole the whole history of um, of our empire in ck2 because accepting and having a higher tolerance of free thinking allows people to form their own opinions and beliefs about religion and that leads to a boost in technology i think this would be really good but yeah in the meantime you guys are going over here okay that's not good but it's not entirely terrible either that will allow me to unseach these provinces at the very least. I don't know, they might actually force... Uh, oh, Hessian Separatists. Yeah, Lothering, you're gonna have to deal with these. I'm 
I'm not gonna do it right now. I'll wait for Trinagov to be annexed. Then we'll see what happens. We'll check the Liberty Desire. It has changed a little bit. Okay. So, yeah, we now have Norwegian Russia, but that does... Yeah, we have too many territories. That's the problem, though. This increases our corruption dramatically. Um, just having so many territories. But yeah, I have an extra army. Is that it? Yeah. So, what do we have? We have... One cav and six infantry. I mean, what we could do is at least, you know, shift consolidate and get rid of one, two, three, four, five, six. And one of you guys. And we keep the amount of troops that we have, right? So that kind of makes sense. So let's have you... I know, move over. Oh, you can't move just now. All right, fine. And then we have two fortresses. One here, Lower Don, and Yelitz. I think I'm actually probably... Hmm. I mean, we've got a couple of Qatar provinces, but some Iconoclast ones too. <clears throat> I probably need to get rid of these fortresses. This one in the steps is just kind of useless. Then we've got this one in Osul. Ah, it's not ideal too. We'll get rid of it. Kind of have to save the money. No, wait. Oh, these are all the steps. I mean, kind of a, having a fortress in this area might not be the worst. Kind of, yeah, I guess I'll keep this one. But we can mothball it for now. And once these troops have recovered, we can move them over here. In fact, we can probably already get our ships over. There we go. So pick them up eventually. And here we've got two trade ships they are protecting trade in Lubak. oh and yeah some people have told me that i should maybe try and switch around our trade improve our trade um maybe go for this as our main node instead of the north sea and perhaps that's a good idea let's actually make this make Lubak. ah can i not do this Hold on. We'll make our, we'll make Gotland our main trading port, since this is where the Merchant Republic lies. There you go. It's going to cost some diplomatic power, but that's fine. And also, one other thing I wanted to do is I wanted to accept or promote uh, the Scottish culture. Because we have one more slot, and the Scots are part of our core territory, so I uh, I think that's that would be a good idea. It's giving us uh, some, some benefits here. Making these people less angry. Uh, in fact, we could actually immediately start converting Desmond now. Oh, yeah, why not? Let's actually do that. Let's actually do it because they're now accepted. Cool. And then I've switched to trading port, which also means we should probably switch around our merchants. We've got uh, one over here. Should probably have you pushing from Novgorod is fine. Pushing from Kazan... Uh, transfer trade power from the White Sea. There you go. And we'll see how that changes our trade. We're currently making eight ducats. We should be making significantly more now. Otherwise, this was a whole waste. Uh, okay. We are not making more money. We have lost money in changing this. We are actually making three ducats less. That is not good. I thought this would help. Why is it... Oh, well, I guess because of Sweden. Sweden has more trade power. Why do they have more, more trade power, though? 31%. I guess they're stealing a lot of our money. Trade power. Why? why? From province. Main trade city in area. Transfer trade is downstream. Multiplied due to trade power modifier. Hmm. Apparently, their provinces are worth a lot more. It's interesting. I mean, they've got this. I guess Riga? Oh, okay, yeah. Well, that's not them. That's not Sweden. We've got... We've got some centers. Okay, I'm actually a little bit... Con Wait, hold on. This is the Baltic. I was looking at uh, Lubag, actually. Hold on. Uh, right, so... Here we've got 13... 
we've got one out of five trade power. Provinces light ships, transfers from traders downstream, but Denmark is very powerful here. Light ships, provinces. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's fine. Local goods produced. All right. Yeah, that's cool. We'll we'll get there eventually. I think it's all good. Oh, I should probably have one. Should probably have someone over here. Actually, not in Kazan. Oh, wait. Ah, uh, okay. So, for some reason... Alright, I'm an idiot. So, for some reason, I thought this would be Lubak. All of this would be one trade node. But no, this is a different trade node than the Baltic. Ah. Yeah, that... That wasn't smart. Okay, that explains that. Okay. Yeah, I should have switched... Okay, well, well, we'll be switching at some point again, I guess. And, um, there goes Torolf, our emperor. He has died. Um, he is, we're, our nation is mourning over the loss of our previous monarch, Torolf II. He died while the army was camped in Neva. Yeah. That sucks. I mean, that sucks. He was, uh, he was a big one. He was really keeping this realm together. Now, actually, corruption is growing again, even though we're rooting it out. Yeah, this is not good. This is not good at all. But uh, there's nothing I can really do. Empress Helle, she's capable though, so that um, gives me some hope. We are no longer over the diplomatic relationship limit, so that's awesome. Um, we're still losing money though, and we've got Catholic... Holy shit. Okay, we gotta do something about this. We gotta do something about this. But first, let's get this army over. And we've got a couple of years left. Katarina's Forza has died. Um, we could go for the production efficiency. That's actually probably not a bad idea. He's gonna pay for himself. 1.3 is what he costs. And our production increases. Well. We have an heir. Ashild. Sure. Production income increases by one and a half ducats almost. So, yeah, this guy is kind of paying for himself, which is nice. Alright, so, you guys have arrived. Let's get you on the boats. Get you on over here. We'll need to um, deal with these Catholic zealots. And I kind of don't want them to actually take the fortress. So I assume I will have to increase army maintenance and send the army of actually our heir, Helle, the first. She's leading troops herself. Yeah, she's going to have to deal with these rebels. She's probably going to be too late. Yeah. Alright. That was to be expected. Um, Are they just going to... They're going to convert all of these provinces, huh? Yeah, this is kind of annoying. I kind of don't want that to happen. I would like to stop them. Alright, we'll cross. Internal conflicts in Saporosi. And we can go for new technology. Giving us a new idea group. I don't know if that's really all that useful. I think I'm going to maybe store it up for now. Okay, you guys are converting more provinces. That sucks. But yeah, we've arrived. And I think we're actually going to immediately go back here to deal with these guys because now I mean they're gonna start converting provinces Brussels for example don't really want to let that happen okay fight these rebels here too yeah we're gonna actually attack immediately before they can do anything we have reinforcements coming but we don't even need them good and more Catholic zealots have risen up Alright, they're a plague. We need to deal with them. We need to uh, rot them out for now, anyway. I mean, they can practice. Friuli has excommunicated Carniola. Now, I'm pretty certain that Carniola is the current emperor. And he's excommunicated. So, the Catholics are still infighting. Uh, which is kind of interesting. Alright, well, good for them. 
And I'm fighting the Catholics too. Alright, so they're crushed. Yuan is influencing people. We're gonna have to crush these 20,000 men. Oof. Oh, I take a lot of damage. Internal conflicts in the Mongols. And what's this? Lose a ton of gold for an elaborate court life. We have no need of such things. Nobility will be very unhappy. Or they will just be a little bit unhappy. You know what? Let's have them be unhappy for a little bit. Good. Okay, so these guys are dealt with. And I think First Army can return. Meanwhile, you guys will have to deal with Iberia. Okay, we should be able to reinforce in time. Actually, I'm going to have you go here first to actually reinforce before we do anything else. Alright. So, yeah, you're, you're doing your trading. Okay, we're losing tons of money. Man. We're still... Man, this is still tough. Actually, you know what we can do? We can actually siege this. That's, that's at least a possibility. We have a plus two siege. We should help here. Good. So, this would be 24,000 men. Sailors rally to aid the army. Oh, that's good. Swedish peasants have risen up. We should be able to deal with them. Our army has endured severe casualties over the past years, with thousands of lives lost in battle. Meanwhile, those who serve navy at sea have not suffered the same fate. Despite the sacrifices they've made to protect our nation, the ranks of our navy do not lack for their hands on deck. As a result, the navy has begun to encourage those willing to risk their lives at sea to aid our ailing land troops instead. After all, if there's no one to protect our ports, even our best ships and crews will have nowhere to dock. This is so cool. I love this. Thank you, sailors. You're, you're, doing, you're doing God's work. That's actually super helpful. Let's see if the uh, estates can maybe uh, do something here. I would like to raise additional levies. That's 7,000 men. Sure. And then... Seek support of the clergy. Demand some administrative support. No, I don't think I need that. Um, could grant monopoly charters for some money. Yep. We'll take the contribution there. That will uh, see us last a little bit longer. And I'll wait for one more month. Hmm. Maybe even a little bit more. Ah, uh, let's actually not pay our troops right now. Because we're just sieging this. Who's this? Catholic zealots in Holland. Well, aren't you Catholic already? That's weird. Why would they be there? Yeah, we gotta go to war with Holland at some point. But he may declare war on Sardinia, Corsica. There's a succession war. Who do you control? Croatia. Oh, that's a big deal. Um, but you're already at war with Capua. And Provence. You're winning that war. That's a big deal. If you get Croatia... That would actually... I mean, you have lands here already. That's actually not too bad for you. Interesting developments for sure. But yeah, we have... Taking this province back, very nice. Let's return. And perhaps some stability increase wouldn't be bad. So expensive, but I'll take it. Okay, we need to improve relations. Let's do that with Denmark first. Let's improve relations here. Okay, in the hopes that that will keep our vassals in line. Is, are these? Oh, this is Capua. Hmm. And Andalusia is being reconquistad by Castile and Italy. Yep. All right. <laughs> Catholics doing their thing. Meanwhile, Rum has taken lands. Oh, actually, a pretty moderate amount of territory they've taken here. It's not too much. And you have managed to control your vassals. Most of them, anyway. Hmm. Good for you. All right. So, rebel uprising, Raytheon separatists. Um, I think we're just gonna go with the same thing we've always done. It's just increase the unrest, uh, the autonomy, to have these guys be a non-issue anymore. Cool, love it. All right. So, 
we can reinforce all of our troops. Let's do that quickly. Maybe for like three months. Shouldn't you reinforce faster? Oh, we're not in our own territory. Oh, could that actually influence it? It probably does. Uh, I don't know. Military axis. No, I'm gonna disagree. Yes, the Phantomids do have internal conflicts. I've... I've noticed. And who are those? Swabian Separatists. I was kind of hoping for Norwegian Separatists, but the culture is wrong, so that kind of explains it. Right, conversion has gone super slow here, unfortunately. Alright, you guys are ready. Let's uh, try and unsiege what the Catholics have taken here so far. And let them attack us at some point. We now have the manpower. Okay, we are no longer ahead in diplomatic technology. That actually hurts us. Trust is low. Norwegian diplomatic reputation, better diplomatic tech. Sweden is no longer loyal. Let's placate their rulers to keep them loyal. Otherwise, the annexation will not continue. Just don't declare a rebel war. That's all I really care about. Just don't... Just don't declare a war on me right now. Okay. So the Catholics will be defeated here? Yes. Thank you. Very good. And so we can start paying out troops for a while and just unsiege these territories a little bit. Perhaps Lothering is going to help us. And um, yeah, we kind of actually need to get ready to declare war on Holland and some of these other promises to retake our cause. Um, but yeah, for now, that will be it for this episode. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.